Welcome to July Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I want to talk about not what's going on in the news because the whole news is what is going on with the market. And I actually, this is something that I said yesterday in my video where everybody was on uh, euphoria, a nice little uh, cloud nine because they were talking about everything's going to go to the moon. This is the most fantastic thing. And I said, you know what? Usually when this happens, when things are going in a certain direction, it's best just to pull back and just take a real deep look at what exactly is going on. Also, I want to take a look at uh, the comparisons of the 2017 bull run and the corrections that they had along the way, as opposed to this 2021 uh, bull run and how institutions may or may not be playing into that factor. And then finally, I want to talk to you about the most ridiculous price prediction I've seen on the internet to date and uh, how you really need to uh, really wise up to, to what is going on around you. Anyhow, so we'll get into all that stuff. But first, I want to talk to you about what's going on in the market. So I had a really good uh, message from somebody on Twitter. And they said, hey, Rob, just want to say thanks for all your memes, which I don't like that memes, but I know he's talking about it. He goes, he says, uh, when, when you talk about, yeah, traditional markets, uh, a 20% drop is uh, you know devastating. But in cryptocurrency, we call that a Tuesday. And that is exactly what is going on today. So if you are new to this space, first of all, welcome. Uh, I envy you. You are in the right place at the right time. Uh, this probably doesn't seem like it right now, but just uh, <laughs> it's like... It's like weather in Texas. If you don't like the weather, just hang around for a couple hours. It'll change. And it's the same thing with cryptocurrency digital assets. So let's take a look what's going on. First of all, it is geez, what time is it? January 11th at 9.20 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we have, what is going on. So Bitcoin, a ah, little bit of a tumble, 20% uh, down. And now it's at 31,000. If you remember, we were uh, hitting major highs of uh, 40,000, 40, 41,000 almost. And uh, it seems like there was no end in sight. And right now, uh, if you're new to it or you just got in recently, you're probably hating me because I don't really seem that concerned. And this was the exact things that I thought about in 2017, actually 2018, when I would watch people on YouTube and I'd be like, who is this jerk who's like thinking this is like no big deal. Uh, this is crazy. We, we just we just lost like, you know, uh, 60%. Actually, I, I was thinking this as it started to roll up too in 2017. And um, I'm gonna show you something um, which, which is gonna put this all, all into perspective. And it's not gonna make much sense now if you're new, but uh, just trust me, uh, when you're when you're here, it will make sense. So I don't know if this is actually gonna be able to uh, play for volume, I'm gonna try, but uh, this is exactly what it really is. That's me. Well, not really me. That's a, that's a much more handsome version of me. And this is a uh, 2017 buyers. Uh, that is, <laughs> that is essentially what I am. And <clears throat> what we have here is essentially 2021, 2013, and then S coin holders. Let me turn this up. Hope you can hear that. First time. But you see that guy right here? This guy right here, the 2013 top buyers. I don't think you can see my, my mouse. Right to the left of Jamie Frank, James Franco there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that essentially are all the people that are like, I don't really care because I bought it so low. And then uh, me and the people who came in 2017 were like, I don't care because you know we bought it at whatever we bought it. And if now if you bought it 2017 at the at the all time high, and then you came back in 2021 and bought it at the all time high, well, maybe you should watch this channel or some other channels a little bit more because you know that's not the way to go. I have been dollar cost averaging for the last three years, four years, to get into this position where I am in right now, and uh, it sucks and it's just it's very boring and nobody believes in you, and that's okay because you gotta believe in what you're doing because everything goes in these four-year cycles like we talk about. It always goes, uh, and hopefully it continues this way, that we will have a, a halving, uh, which happened in 2012, halving, 2013, all-time high, 2014, dip, 2015, reset. 2016, we had a halving, 2017, all-time high, 2018, we had a major dip, and 2019, we had a reset, 2020, we had a halving. 2021 will be our all-time highs. 2022, I believe, 
will be a major dip. 2023 will be a reset. 2024, it'll start all over again. So I'll be here for the long haul. I'll be here for this bull run for the dip, and I'll be here to educate all the new people that, that come in for uh, 2025 and beyond. And uh, that is what I've chosen to do. Hopefully I've helped some people out. And uh, that is what is really going on. So that is just one aspect. So let's move on. And this is something that I said yesterday uh, in the video. I'm gonna splice that in right here because I don't think I can, I can do it the way I'm recording right now. But basically, everybody was so happy about yesterday. And, and as well they should be, it was a great time, right? Everything's going great, and whatever else. But as time has gone on, I've just learned that when everybody's going, when, when, when the herd is going in this, in this direction and there's like a critical mass of everybody going, you gotta really just, just step back and go, what the heck? What, what the heck is really going on here? Because it isn't, we can't all go this way. Somebody's gonna do something to, to divert. And I think that's what, what is going on here. So there's always gonna be a correction. There's always gonna be people taking profits and that's okay. I mean, if they wanna take profits and traders and people are getting liquidated and whatnot, sure, uh, that's just how it goes. But uh, you have to understand that uh, when everything is such at this, uh, at like a euphoric moment, just take a step back and go, is this really, where we are all really going, or am I being led by the hand down a dangerous path? Not that it's gonna be that awful. I mean, look, we're gonna have a correction. This is going to uh, rectify itself. And then before you know it, we'll be all the way back to all time highs. And so let me just splice in that, that video right here, and then we'll go on to the next piece. Because you have to understand, as more institutions come in, that means that it's institutional, uh, traditional market money. And what is 100% liquid all the time? Cryptocurrency and digital asset markets. The other markets, they shut down. Cryptocurrency never does shut down. So when people say, ah, oh, there's, a, there's a decoupling, yeah, kinda, but not really, because as more institutions come in, they put more money into it, at some point they'll be like, and especially if the stock market starts to uh, go down the tubes, like people are predicting at some point, but they've been predicting that forever, so who knows. Um, if that keeps happening, you, you have to understand these traditional market players that are just like uh, the hedge funds, uh, the ones that are just like institutional investors, not, not, like, not like the big guys like MicroStrategy, but all the, one, all the little ones that are getting in, they're going to start selling. And they're going to start selling in mass because they need to cover some losses. And this is exactly what Mike talks about. He says, if the speculative bubble bursts, Bitcoin will go down for a while. There's just too much correlation between people with risk assets. If you made a ton of money here and you're losing a ton of money here, at one point you're going to take some profits where you've made money. And so if the S&P was down 20% in the next three days, Bitcoin will be lower, not higher. So I know people think, oh, no, you know, it's a great asset and, and it's, it's schmuck insurance like uh, Shamath Palahipatiah says. That's true. But you have to understand that people will still not see it that way. And I was actually talking to Alex. Alex Mascioli over the Alex Mascioli, and he's the, the head of institutional service at BQuant. He talks with billion dollar hedge funds all day, every day. And what he told me made me realize that there aren't as many steady hands as you would like to think out there. And I will let him explain it in his next video. I don't want to take the thunder, but it made me really start to be a little bit more pessimistic at what's going on. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's not going to be great and the cryptocurrency is going to be great in two, three, five, 10, 20 years. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the near term, expect major volatility. And that's just the way it is. And especially with what he told me about these institutional players. I got to tell you, these, the more that I get into it and people talk about smart money, it's not smart money. They're just a bunch of gamblers. And that's really what it comes down to. And yeah. we've seen this all, we see this all day long, right? We see, we see the micro strategies, we see the mass mutuals, uh, we see the Paul Tudor Jones, we see everybody coming in and we think this is fantastic. There's no way that, that this can actually go down. And this one's totally different. And maybe everybody's right, but am I the only naysayer out there that like, you know what, I don't trust everybody. I don't trust everybody when everything's going in one direction. Are you trying to screw me over? Are, is, are things really, I, 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 sometimes I just don't think that, that everything is just uh, sugar land and rainbows and, and, and uh, magical gumdrops. I, I always have to be a little bit cautious because not just from what happened in 2017, you have to understand that, I mean, I made businesses, I've done pretty decent, uh, we'll say, uh, but I've also had some big failures and I've learned from those failures. And one of those things that I've learned is to be cautious and to minimize uh, what is going on around you as far as uh, volatility and to minimize risk. Anyway. Okay, so I splice it in and here's what it all comes down to. 
Uh, yeah, like I talked about, it, it's all going to correct itself. It's okay. It's going to keep going up. So let's take a look. This was a great uh, tweet that I found from uh, VJ Boyapati. I hope I said that right. And uh, he says, in the 2017 B Bitcoin bull market, whoops, hold on. Let me, let me uh, do a close up here. That would probably be better. He says, uh, in the 2017 Bitcoin bull market, corrections found demand after drops from 30 to 40%. 30 to 40%. 2017 bull run. That's pretty amazing, right? And uh, so I just want you to remember this if you're new. Uh, in the traditional market, uh, anything above a 10% drop is like uh, earth shattering, you know? And uh, for crypto, uh, you know, we call that a, a Monday morning. Not a big deal. That's just how it is. Because I really do think that if you ever wanted to do trading in the traditional market, everybody should just start here in <laughs> cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Because if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. It's like New York. Uh, because if you can stomach 40% dips, then a 5% drop over there, you'd be like, what are you guys all crying about? Don't be a bunch of babies. This is nothing. Over in crypto land, we do this every day. So that would be a great trading ground, uh, training ground. But this from, from VJ, he compares 2017 to 2020. He says, uh, in the current bull market, demand seems to appear after corrections between 15 to 20%. This is probably indicative of a difference in buyer's retail versus institutional today. So I need to blow this up. And this was 2017. So we're going from actually 2016 to 2017. So here's 2017 right here. Then we would go up and we'd have these big dips, 33%. And we'd go up and we have like a 38% dip, up 36, up, down, up, down, up, down, seesaw, right? Big dips. And I remember these things and uh, it scared the hell out of me. Now I'm like, eh, whatever. So that's what we have for 2017. Now let's take a look at what's going on in the current. So we're on 2021 and this is what people were talking about. And I was always, I'm a little, I'm still spec, uh, uh, concerned about it. Um, it's speculative. We'll see. Um, when I see these types of ranges, because people always say, well, no, 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 don't worry because the uh, institutions are here and they are going to, you know, totally stabilize the markets and there's not going to be these big wild dips like before. So, I mean, yes and no. I mean, we're not going to have 30% dips, but we still get like 20, 25% dips. So I guess, you know, hey, 10% uh, less, that's pretty good, I suppose. And uh, this is exactly what, what he was drawing. So here we are in December. We've had, you know, a little bit. So really it comes down to right here, uh, the 14th. And we're going up, 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 a little dip. Up, 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 a little dip, dip, up, 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 up. And then here we had a dip at 20%. And then uh, come over here when we had 40,000, now we're hitting another 18 to 20%. And who knows where it's gonna, where it's gonna land. I tend to think it's going to be like 20, 25%, maybe 30% like before. And some people are like, no, Rob, you're an idiot because uh, all the institutions are here. So it doesn't really matter. Keep your eye on the prize because really what it comes down to is this. Whatever price action happens today, you have to be an, an investor. And that's why like, I mean, if you want to trade, that's cool. Like I, I've done a little trading. I suck at it. And that's why we do the trinity of trading uh, with uh CJ from Market Rebellion and Weston from TTC, because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And uh, I'm just dabbling into it and they're teaching me. So we do those videos, we'll probably do them once a week. But the bulk, the lion's share, 95% is me being a investor, is just putting money in and then just leaving it and not giving a care in the world because it, it will all uh, work itself out. And this actually reminds me of, a, of uh, the Warren Buffett millionaire bet, million dollar bet. I don't know if you remember this, but around 2009, Warren Buffett, he challenged all the large hedge funds and said, hey, you guys suck, and uh, I'm gonna bet you a million dollars that if I just put money into the S&P 500, I will beat the pants off you in a decade. And nobody took it. None of the hedge funds were like, no, 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 we pick all these great stocks. You know, we can, we can get you trading, we can get you all this stuff. And uh, so he said, sure. And one company, one big large hedge fund, billion dollar hedge fund, took him up on it. And in 2019, 2018, 2019, somewhere around there, uh, they compared it and Warren, it wasn't even close. Warren Buffett beats the, beat the pants off him and, uh, they paid a million bucks. And of course, Warren doesn't need it, but it was a great lesson. That's one I will never forget. So it's the same, it's the same lesson here. So you, you can trade, you can do whatever else you want to, uh, but just look at the historical data and then go from there. Uh, it's just, it's, I just think it's best to be an investor. That's all. I've, I've made the most money being an investor and doing all the trades and whatever else in the beginning when I started didn't really work out. Anyhow. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I'm sure you'll have some opinions. That'd be great. And let's move on to our last piece. So uh, our last piece here, this, it's just getting crazy. It's getting crazy. 
these uh, price predictions. And uh, I don't know, it just seems kind of ridiculous that uh, we have this type of thing. Let me blow this up, actually, so you can really see this. Oh, I can see it right there. No, nah, I got I to gotta show it to you. So this right here, my top five altcoin picks and predictions, uh, Moon Lambos and such, whatever else. Okay. So this was actually from uh, Alex Mascioli. He had lost his mind. And uh, I want to show you uh, what was said in his video. So he's going to give you a price prediction. I'm going to tell you exactly how wrong he is. So uh, let's take a listen. Hopefully you can hear this. If not, I'll splice it in. Thought into this. Took a bunch of those predictions, uh, you know, in mind. And uh, looked at some charts, um, some sentiment data. And uh, I came up with this. Bitcoin is going to hit 367192 dollars on June 3rd. <laughs> yep, 367192 on June 3rd. Second bonus, ready for this? Ethereum. This is like one of the greatest money makers of all time. I mean, percentage, you know, capital gains wise, you guys are screwed if you've had this forever because you're making so much money. I wouldn't trade it, just hold, hodl it because after the prediction I'm about to give you, you're, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to have that altcoin <laughs> lifestyle. Ethereum, my prediction, $126,548. dollars <laughs> $126,548, and that's happening September 17th, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alex has lost his mind. So that was actually a parody, and it was pretty damn funny. Uh, if, you have, <laughs> if you haven't watched that video, I'll link it at the very end. And really what it comes out of this is that uh, no one has a crystal ball. No one knows what's going what's gonna to happen. I mean, we can, we can take a look at historical data and, and you know, uh, play it from that. Um, and, you know, even I had a pretty crappy prediction when I first started YouTube, when I actually I put this video out where I said XRP was going to like, like 500 bucks or something crazy and nonsense. And of course I was wrong. That's why I, I, I stay away from predictions. And uh, me and Alex were talking about, it. he's like, God dang, he goes, there's so many this craziness. And whatever you want to say about it for the market, I mean, people did put a lot of money in, but uh, that's not, that's not what I'm here for. I mean, it is funny. Everything else. What what I'm here for is to be a, is to be a boring wet blanket. I'm sorry to to say that. That's exactly what I am, and uh, I just try to just bring just rain in. I, I'm like I'm like the opposite side uh, sometimes, and just a little bit more of a reserve voice because you you never know what what exactly is going to happen. So just uh, play it safe, and then you know just take a little bit of advice from me, a little advice from somebody else, a little advice here and there, and whatever else. I mean, I can't give you financial advice, but just like the philosophy, you know, just to go from that. And uh, I am, I did my, my 2021 price predictions and um, everybody's like, you're dumb. Uh, those are so low. And I'm like, well, I, I want to be conservative because that's just, that's just the way I see it. If, if I tell you that it's going to go like this crazy number, whatever else, and it might, then, then, you know, Hey, great. But if I just say, you know, be a little conservative, this is the most conservative low number I can give you, and that's what I did on those price predictions, I'll link that at the very end, then uh, if, it, if, if I'm wrong, hopefully I'm wrong, and it goes way higher, I don't think it'll be too ticked off at me. Like, ah, oh, Rob, you're an idiot, because it actually 10 x instead of, uh, or it actually uh, 50 x instead of your 10 x Great, sure, whatever, I don't care. Dare to be dumb. And that's about it. So anyhow, thanks so much for uh, watching uh, this, <laughs> this video. I'll link Alex's thing at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the thumbnail. Uh, and that's it. So thanks again. Um, and that's it. So uh, appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye.